There are so many benefits of hyperbaric oxygen therapy, it's hard to list all of them. But one of the things that we know is that so many of these benefits are tied directly to the fact that hyperbaric oxygen helps to raise cellular energy. How does hyperbaric raise cellular energy? That is what we're gonna cover in today's video. Welcome to video four in our series on mechanisms of action of hyperbaric oxygen therapy. Category three is the mitochondrial aspect of hyperbaric oxygen. This is probably one of the most well-known and well-understood mechanisms of action of hyperbaric because it's literally one of the main reasons we use hyperbaric oxygen therapy. We said that there are about 12 different mechanisms of action of hyperbaric, and we've grouped them into about four different categories, an antimicrobial category, which we covered two videos ago, an immune modulating category, which we covered in our last video, and now here we are at the mitochondrial activity or cellular energy side of hyperbaric oxygen. So let's get right into it. Why do you breathe? Literally, one of the most important reasons why you breathe is obviously to bring air into your lungs to drive oxygen into your cells. Why is it so important to drive oxygen into your cells? Literally, to get it into your mitochondria. Remember the powerhouse of the cell. Why did we call it the powerhouse of the cell in seventh grade biology? The mitochondria is the organelle or the portion of a cell literally responsible for making cellular energy. So, Quite literally, the reason oxygen is so important and the reason we need to inhale air is to eventually drive oxygen from the air that we're breathing all the way down its concentration gradient until we get it to the mitochondria. And in the mitochondria, we can now oxidize the fuel that we've been eating, our food, and through the oxidation of fuel, generate energy. Of the 12 different mechanisms of action of hyperbaric, the only one that really applies here is hyperoxygenation. So what does that mean? Hyper increased oxygenation oxygen. We're increasing the oxygen into our cells. When you look at a mitochondria and you look at it as a factory, a processing factory of fuels, between the oxygen we need and the fuel that we need to generate that energy, one of the most important and the most frequent rate limiting steps to how much energy a cell can make is literally how much oxygen we can drive into that cell. Oxygen is the final electron acceptor of the electron transport chain, and having a low oxygen environment will slow down each of the previous steps of energy production. Driving oxygen levels higher literally can make that factory generate exponentially higher levels of energy the more oxygen we can get in there. Right now, if you put a pulse oximeter on your finger, assuming your heart is healthy, your lungs are healthy, and you're breathing air, we should see a normal healthy reading, 98, 99% saturated, meaning under normal atmospheric conditions in a moderately healthy human, you're already carrying as much oxygen as any human can carry. So even if I had 100% oxygen in a mask and I had somebody breathing it, yes, we can get some increase of oxygen. It's really a pretty small percentage because you're already carrying almost the entire amount you're capable of carrying. So how do we create hyperoxygenation? literally by using pressure. We'll get right back to that video, but real quick, if you're a practitioner or you're looking to get into hyperbarics and you're wanting to learn more and making sure that you're offering this therapy as effectively and as safely as possible, I want you to know that we offer a series of courses, some of which are online and some of which are in person. At thehbotcourse.com, we'll include a link below. We have several courses available from training and certification in hyperbaric medicine, safety director, as well as a few different business implementation options to get the business up and running. So if you think that training and education would be helpful for you, take a look at thehbotcourse.com. Again, the link will be in the description below. Now back to our video. Oxygen passively diffuses from the air we're breathing down its concentration gradient from our lungs all the way down into the mitochondria. If we can raise the concentration gradient in the air that we're breathing, we can create a higher driving force to get more oxygen into your circulation, more oxygen into your cell, and ultimately more oxygen into the mitochondria. The only real tool that we have to make a meaningful effect in this process is increasing atmospheric pressure. And that's what we use a hyperbaric chamber for. Hyperbaric, increased pressure. So you go inside this hyperbaric chamber with or without enriched oxygen. Either way, we are increasing the concentration gradient. We are hyper oxygenating. We are literally super saturating your plasma of your blood. We can certainly get your red blood cell carrying capacity from 98 to 100%. But once your red blood cells are carrying all the oxygen that they can carry, where's the extra oxygen gonna go? So we can literally, under pressure, drive that oxygen into a fluid of your body. 
So the plasma of your blood, which normally carries very little oxygen, specifically it carries three milliliters of oxygen per liter of blood, a very small amount, can all of a sudden become a reservoir of almost unlimited oxygen, depending on how much pressure we're using, what percentage of oxygen you're breathing, and how long you stay in that chamber. The plasma, your interstitial fluids, your lymphatic fluids, your cerebral spinal fluids, all of these fluids over time will become saturated in oxygen, creating a massive hyperoxygenation in your body, ultimately driving incredibly high amounts of oxygen into the mitochondria, driving ATP production. I'm sure many of you would agree that one of the common denominators amongst almost all the chronic illnesses, be it heart disease, cancer, diabetes, stroke, autoimmune diseases, neurodegenerative diseases, one of the common denominator amongst all of these chronic illnesses is mitochondrial dysfunction. Mitochondrial dysfunction leads to a reduced level of ATP production. A reduced level of ATP production means that each one of your cell types, each one of your organs now functions at a lower and slower rate because it can't create the energy it needs to function at levels that maybe it did years prior. So with hyperbaric oxygen, it has multiple effects on the mitochondria. Number one, right away, as soon as we're getting hyperoxygenation, which is literally within the first few minutes of being in a chamber, we're already driving more oxygen to the mitochondria, removing that rate-limiting step to ATP production, and increasing how much cellular energy those mitochondria can make. Next, if we repeat this cycle repetitively over a course of weeks and months, the mitochondria will recognize this elevated level of oxygen over a prolonged period of time, and the mitochondria start to swell or grow in size. The mitochondria are trying to create the capacity to utilize all of this increased oxygen that we're driving in over this series of weeks and months. Lastly, the mitochondria will start to multiply. Literally, your body will increase mitochondrial density, the number of mitochondria, now in order to still make use of all of this oxygen that you're driving into the body. Think about it like this. Imagine you had a four-cylinder engine in your car, and we could drive oxygen into that engine and make that four-cylinder turn into an eight-cylinder, right? So we've made that engine grow in size. You can now get more power out of that engine, right? That would be incredibly useful for almost all of us, especially as we age, whether or not we had some sort of chronic illness we were dealing with. Next, imagine instead of one V8 engine, you had seven V8 engines. Imagine how much power you could create. That's literally what's happening in the mitochondria. First, we're driving more oxygen in, creating more power. Next, the mitochondria are growing to utilize that oxygen to create even more power. We are then increasing mitochondrial density, increasing the number of engines that each one of our cells has to create even more cellular energy. So whether that's dealing with stressors in our life, dealing with the aging process overall, dealing with improved performance or recovery from a certain condition, all of this excess mitochondrial function, all this increased oxygen leading to increased cellular energy production is going to create faster improvements in recovery, faster improvements in healing, faster improvements in all the other benefits that hyperbaric is associated with. So hopefully this helps create a much broader picture of exactly how does hyperbaric increase cellular energy? Why is it so important? But ultimately, why is hyperbaric associated with helping so many different conditions? I say all the time, hyperbaric should cure nothing. We shouldn't talk about hyperbaric as the treatment of disease. We should talk about hyperbaric as something that is foundational and fundamental and helps so many other systems, tissue types, and cell types. Why? Because oxygen is critical, because cellular energy is a necessary requirement for improved health and performance, and hyperbaric helps to do that. And by improving cellular energy, it's also helping to improve so many other aspects of our health. As always, I'm appreciating your time and your attention. Subscribe to make sure you catch video number five, which is category number four, the regenerative qualities of hyperbaric oxygen and how should hyperbaric be viewed through a regenerative medicine type lens. We'll see you next time. Thanks a lot.